How can I help? Yes, I wanted to ask about your retirement withdrawal schedule. I was okay. interested in investing $30,000. $30, and when I went over and did put in my information, I put retired like you had, like you posted on, on YouTube, retired in zero years, spend 30 years in retirement. Yeah. And amount was 30000 Interest rate, 8%. Annual inflation rate, 3%. Okay. But I noticed for the beginning balance started at year 2021. So I was sort of confused about that. If I don't plan on retiring until 10 years from now, which would be 2031, it started at 2021. Well, you would, what would happen is you're asking about the, um, the retirement withdrawal calculator, right? So right. instead right. of putting zero, you would put 10 because you're going to retire in 10 years. And you would say the number of retirement years would be 30, and then the annual interest rate would be 8, and then the average inflation would be 3%, and then the amount of money you want to retire with is $30,000? Yes. Okay. And All right, so it looks like if you do do that math, everything is right here. Nothing seems crazy. It sounds like every year you would be taking out around $1,200. One thousand two hundred. So that means yeah. that's why I was a little confused because the way you did it with the I was the one about the one hundred thousand. Yeah, four thousand dollars. Zero zero years. It starts at well, twenty twenty. Well, what I would be assuming so is okay. So here's here's some context, right? The context is you have an annuity, right? Which I've been doing a lot more research thanks to um Dave Ramsey and all those people over there that do great work. Um, and there's a lot of fees associated with annuities. And the big benefit is that basically you kind of get, for example, this this guarantee that you're going to get this fixed amount of money. But there's also, for example, the insurance charges, the rider charges, um, the investment management fees, the surrender charges, and also the commissions. There are a bunch of fees associated with this, and there are also penalties if you decide, for example, to break it. And there's also like a time period where you can't take your money out until that actually commences, right? So uh -huh. the whole idea is when you picture that, and you picture, for example, well, if I use $100,000 today, the reason I said zero years was because basically you could have access to that money this year. So you would be investing that money right now today. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. Or this exact year. So that's when, when I was doing the whole calculation, that's why I put zero years because you can basically do that right now. Make sense? Withdraw it right now once I invest. I can start yeah. that first year withdrawing the 4%. Yeah. And let me ask you a question, right? Because one big thing is that um, the question is kind of like, just so I can understand here, right? It sounds mm -hmm. like you're a little insecure about, for example, that you want to make sure you don't lose this money or for, that you want to have a guarantee, basically. Does that sound right? Well, I already have done it. Like I said, it's a single premium index annuity. When I read over it, at the time, it had been a while before I had read over it. So when I looked more closely at it, I will get a withdrawal penalty because before age 59, the federal income tax comes to 10%. Yeah, exactly. Plus the withdrawal, plus the withdrawal fee of, I told you, the 8.25%. Yeah. So, look, yeah. nothing nothing in this world is free, right? And it sounds like you feel kind of like um, you have this idea and now they have like this different idea. That's why insurance companies are a little tricky, right? So when I say, for example, well, if you do break this whole contract with this annuity company, whether they charge you 5%, 8%, or 10%, you're still going to be better off than investing that money with them. Now, here's why I say this. Because if you are already planning, for example, to just... And by the way, guys, if you guys don't know, an annuity is basically when you choose to either pay towards a lump sum or just put on a lump sum and basically guarantee yourself some income when you retire or whatever it is. But to actually get this guarantee in a way, there are going to be commissions and fees and a whole bunch of little things that insurance companies always squeeze in there. So uh -huh. it seems like everything is good on paper, but when you look at the details, that's when kind of things kind of go off the, off the road. So here's the idea. Let's say, for example, you were to take out this $100,000 which you have right now. And let's say they charge you a penalty of around 10%, right? So that would cost you around $10,000, right? 
Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Could it be, I think we got... could it be for 10,000 with the 10, 10 with the IRS and the 8.25% from the annuity? Okay, so it would be a 10% fee with the IRS, so the tax mm-hmm. penalty, and then for you have to um is it you have to you have to find out if it's a ten percent fee on the on the total amount or if it's a ten percent fee on the gains that you have accumulated so far. Well That's when important. I do that withdrawal with the withdrawal, which is the eight point two five percent, that's eight thousand two fifty. They're going to report that as my income. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so that's so you, 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 didn't, you, didn't, you, you didn't think that's those gonna happen? No, I that my financial advisor did go over that with me, but like I said, mm-hmm. not I haven't had experience with stocks and bonds. All my experience is hearing from some of my friends that they invested and they lost a lot of money. Yeah. I knew I did not know what I was doing until okay. I started watching your channel and listening to some other financial advisors on YouTube. I didn't understand the stocks and bonds, so listen to you, I understand right. it better. If I knew what I know now. If I knew yeah. that then, I would have done it the way you were seeing with the 80% stock, 20% bond. Okay. But okay. I did not know. So I was doing it with the annuity to protect, you know, because I understood. Yeah, to protect your saying. income. Right. So it sounds like you kind of you kind of had an idea, right? And now mm-hmm. you're a little afraid. It feels like that because you kind of like um. It's, it sounds like it's not. It's like it sounds like you you were sold something, and it's not really what they told you it was because they didn't tell you all the hidden details, right? Right, and it's not doing what you said as far as the compounding interest. I believe I'm going to meet with him again, like you know, sometime this month to go over it again, but it's not compounding interest. I believe that that amount of 5288 will be a fixed amount. So I don't believe yeah. it's human. It's not going to um, increase, yeah, which I don't is going to mess so. up with, with inflation. Okay, so I think I understand. You correct me here. They sold you something with this advertisement. It turns out it's not what you thought it was. And now you kind of want a solution. Does that sound right? Right. That's what the financial advisor, I told so, him that I was not. He asked how much I wanted to do in stocks and bonds and that this single premium index annuity, like I was saying, Well, the thing is, percent. unless you're unless your insur- uh, financial advisor is a fiduciary, most of the times they do get commissions for selling you these products. That's why, for example, if you listen, that's why, you know, I don't care about advertising Dave Ramsey or myself, right? Because mm-hmm. when I tell you something... I don't get paid for none of this stuff, you know? I'm not going to tell uh-huh. you, do this company, I'm going to get paid money, and neither does Dave Ramsey, right? So that's the whole uh-huh. point. So here's a solution. Okay. The big caveat is we you, we made a mistake, right? The mistake has been made. We had an idea. They, they bamboozled us, and it's fine um, because we can kind of get out of it. So the idea is if you do manage to get out of this thing, whether they charge you, for example, at the worst level, 20% of your money is evaporated. Well, Bye. if we were to say we're going to invest at $80,000 this year and we're going to retire, for example, 10 years from now, right? Right. And now, if we grow that money at 8% without putting any money extra on it, by the time we retire, we would have around $172,000, meaning mm-hmm. we recover. It's not too late to recover. Now, on top of that, if we were to say, well, I'm going to invest at $80,000, but on top of that, I'm still going to go ahead and try to max out my Roth IRA. I may put some money on the match that I actually get from my company. So let's just say, for example, you manage to invest somewhere like around $8,000 per year. Does that sound like something you're able to do? Or does that sound, for example, maybe a little too much? I don't have a Roth 401. Um, I have a 403B. I don't have the wrong. Yeah, world. that's fine. It's like, it's just like the educational one. It's fine. It's like the same thing. So you can have, for example, a 403B plan or you can have a Roth 403B plan. And then personally, you can have, for example, a Roth IRA and a traditional IRA. So let's just say, how much are you currently investing into your 403B plan? Right. Year? Now I'm not able to invest because I had to take a leave of absence to take care of sick relatives. Okay. So right now, I'm not able to invest anymore. Okay. Because the so what is, your, what is your income right now? My income is based on whenever I get someone, I do the um, tutoring. So yeah. it's not like a regular income because, it's, you know, I'm doing after this. The after the pandemic, that's how um, I started doing the tutoring. 
but that's okay. not on a regular basis. But what? But you guys have like a household income, right? You and your husband, right? You guys um manage your money together. Uh, yes. Okay. So, what's the household income per month? And for your numbers, let's just use for example the low end. So, if on average you make like five hundred dollars per month, let's just use the low number. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to do with this information is kind of like get you like a a timeline to find out how much money you guys are going to have by the time you actually retire 10 years from now. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what would you say, Nat, is your household income per month? You said per, per month, yeah. I would say about 2500 to 3000 Plus 3000 No. I would say on average... I would say 3000 Okay, so let's use 2500 Like I said, we want to always minimize the income, and we always want to mm -hmm. hype up the expenses because expenses can go up, but we don't want to be short on money. So we want to use, for example, a low number. So let's just use, for example, $2,500. And let's mm -hmm. say, again, remember last time you told me, Tommy, my mortgage is paid off, right? Yes, no mortgage. So the good thing is you don't have that many expenses going crazy. Now, if we were to say, hey, I'm just going to invest, for example, 15% towards my my retirement. So 2500 multiplied by 15%, every single month is around $375. Multiply by 12, that's around $4,500. That's enough to basically put it into your Roth IRA. You're not going to max it out, but that's just fine. Maybe next year, you're back at work, your family member is better, and things will just resume to normal. But if we're going to just assume that you're just going to have that same income for the next 10 years, for example, if you have $80,000 invested, 4500 invest in, for example, every single year for the next 10 years at an 8% return, which is on the low end, we would have around $243,000 by the okay. time you ask to retire. Does that make sense? You say 80000 invested. In $80,000 invested, right? No, you're going to be investing, if you break the annuity, you would have 80 k at your disposal right now to invest into the funds, mm -hmm. right? And right. then you would be investing 15% of your income every single month, which would add up to around $4,500 every single year for the next 10 years. Now, if we assume this money grows at around 8%, the benefit is when you're doing it this way, there are no crazy management fees. So your fees are going to be somewhere like around 0.07%, which is ridiculously slow, ridiculously slow compared to what you're paying right now. So overall, in those 10 years, you're going to have around $243,000 in your investment account. Now, if we use the 4% rule and we just take out 4% of that, we're going to be able to actually have $9,720 coming out of that account every single year. Yeah. Divided by 12, that would be $810 in extra income um, per month. Per month. Yeah. Now, here's the caveat, right? Um, the good thing is that if you do return to work, you should be able, because, you know, on the 401k side, for both of you guys, I don't know if, you, if your husband, does your husband has a 401k too? No, he does not. Okay. But what does company allow that stuff? Or he can have his own Roth IRA. Overall. If you guys do have combined finances, which it doesn't sound like you do, if I'm being honest, but if you guys do have combined finances, he can invest $6,000 into his Roth IRA, use $6,000, and then plus, when you return back to work, put some extra money, for example, into your 403B plan. Now, this could mean, for example, you could just drain out that 80 k in the next, for example, four years to five years, just by okay. investing it little by little. Now, the big benefit is here, for example, that once it is time to retire, you're able to just roll over all that money into the Roth IRA. Now, what happens is basically all this money is going to be fully tax free because you're investing with post tax money, which basically means okay. when you are withdrawing that nine thousand dollars, guess what? All that money is yours. A hundred percent tax free. That's hundred percent tax free. And that's following your 80 percent stock ETF. And 20% yeah. bonds, I looked at that with Vanguard, the S&P 500, mm -hmm. the moderately aggressive, the developed yeah. markets. Yeah, mm -hmm. I made up. I went over that. 
that YouTube post that you have with the small cap corporate bonds, treasury mm-hmm. bonds, real estate, emerging markets. So I followed that with M1 Finance. Yeah. So M1 I- Finance, what I would recommend you open up is actually a Roth IRA not a taxable account because you want this money in your retirement funds. The only time you invest, for example, in a taxable account is when you make, for example, such a massive amount of income where you're able to just max out every account out there, right? But if you're able to just, if you can't max out the, go ahead. You're saying that it's best that I not invest with the M1 Finance? No, no, no. I'm saying when you do invest with M1 Finance, I recommend you open up a retirement account with them. So a Roth IRA with them because you want to have that money invested into your Roth retirement account because if you have $80,000, right, which is a lot of money, you can invest $6,000 into your um into your Roth and then 19500 not including, for example, the catch-up into your 401k, which means by the end of the year, you only have left $54,000 which means like probably like in three years, like maybe less than three years, you're done with all that $80,000 basically. You fully drained it out and it's all into these retirement accounts. Now, the only caveat is this. I like to be fully transparent here. When you do do this and you're done with this job and it's going to be time to roll over the money from your 403B plan over to a traditional IRA, um, that's going to be fully tax-free. But because you were investing, for example, um, it depends, you know, ask your employer if they actually allow, for example, a Roth, I mean, a 403B, like Roth version of it. So they should have that. They might have that, like a Roth 403B plan. Now, what that would mean is basically when you go ahead and you're investing 19500 in there, it's with post-tax money. The match, they would put it, for example, into the 403B plan. Now, I don't want to confuse you here. But what would happen is when you do retire from that company, you can just roll over the money from the Roth 403B plan directly into the Roth IRA. And then after five years, you're able to take that money out as you want to because there is like a little, well, not really because it's already been invested there. So you're pretty good. But the money that's in the 403B plan, the big problem is that when you roll that money into the traditional IRA to then roll it over, for example, into the, into the Roth IRA, they're going to tax you on the gain. Because that money was never taxed, right? Because it's pre-tax money. The government doesn't after mess up. Half, after if I will try after six and a half, I'm still going to be taxed. Yeah. So the four three B plans are taxed. So basically, any four hundred one k, because that's kind of what it is, right? It's like a four three B plan is just like for um usually for teachers and people that work, for example, in health services and hospitals, whatever, but it's still like a 401k. And you're still investing, for example, pre-tax money. It's before you pay taxes. You kind of get like a tax deduction. So you get this benefit today, but tomorrow they tax you on it. That's why when you have a million dollars in a 401k, it's really like around $700,000. But when you have a million dollars in a Roth IRA, it's a million dollars. It's fully yours. That's the big difference. Okay. Now, I don't. Know if the only thing I don't know if sure I'll be able to do this the um, retirement account the four hundred one k like you're saying because I don't know about if I'll be able to to go back. Is it a teacher shortage? So I may have to continue doing the private tutoring. That's fine. I'm not. I'm not telling you you have to go back to do that. So if you're not gonna go back to that job, what you wanna do is roll over um the four hundred three b money into, for example, like um into the traditional IRA. You can do that also with M1 Finance, help you out with that whole thing. So once you have it in there, if you want to, for example, you can either roll over the investments or just like sell them. You shouldn't be taxed on them because they're basically in a retirement account. But then when you do, how much do you have in the four in the in the four three B plan, by the way? The four three B, I have um, twenty eight thousand. Yeah, so it shouldn't be like any any. And uh, what's your gain? Do you know your, your yeah? It shouldn't be any crazy um. Dollars. Um, what was that? For like they have per month, I look at the gain. So I could just say for this month, like eight hundred dollars. Okay. It's it's a little different than that. But my 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 advice is this, right? You have to understand this. If you're not going to return to that company, if you roll over that money into M1 Finance, right, into their traditional IRA. You can then, for example, sell those investments, invest it into the portfolio. So now you have those. And then when you want to roll over that money into the Roth IRA, 
understand that you will pay the tax that you didn't pay when you first invested it. Because remember, right, when you when you when you get paid money, you're supposed to pay taxes. But because you mm -hmm. put it into the retirement, they said we'll pause the taxes until it's time to take the money out when you're 70 years old, when we actually have mandatory distributions. Does that make sense? Yeah, so you're saying it's better for me instead of uh, 59 and a half, instead of um, withdrawing that money, rolling it over. Yeah, you don't want to withdraw. You'll get, you'll, get, you'll get a tax penalty. You want to roll it over, obviously. Over, when you roll okay. it over into a traditional IRA, it's still in a retirement fund. There are, there's no tax there. But you, but I would recommend, because you're 52 years old, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, so I would recommend, for example, because the thing is, right, an, a, a Roth IRA has like a clock. So when you roll over the money into the Roth, you're not, you're not supposed to touch it for at least five years. If you do touch it, they give you like a penalty. So that's not what mm -hmm. you want to do. So if you did the rollover, let's say this month, and then you pay the taxes on it when you roll over to the Roth, five years from now, you can go ahead when you're like now 57 years old. If you want to take the money out, you can fully tax-free. That's the benefit of it. Make uh -huh. sense? Yeah. But if right now, again, I'm going to put myself in your shoes. If right now I'm worried about this annuity, I'm not returning to work, and I'm just going to do tutoring, which can fluctuate a lot. My biggest thing would be I want to move on this as fast as possible, right? So I'm going to, me personally, I would most likely try to get out of this annuity, invest that money with my retirement accounts. And by the way, if you have um, a tutoring business, that's uh -huh. uh, an LLC, potentially an S-Corp. And that's also, for example, a SEP or an individual 401k. And now you can just invest into your own retirement through your own um retirement accounts that you create for yourself. You can do that with Vanguard if you want. You can start like your own business. So when okay. you do that, you're able to invest a bunch of the money. And then you can just open up your own Roth 401k and your own 401k. And that's just a lot more a lot a lot more better. Okay? okay. But if I invest okay. that eighty thousand dollars and I invest fifty percent of my money, I'm gonna be able to when I do retire, I have that two hundred and forty thousand dollars in there and I'm good. I'm okay. Okay? Okay. That's the biggest thing. And if you're very scared, for example, for your family or anything like that, uh, which is not like a, because you're already 52 years old, you have grown adults. But if you want to, like, um, if you're scared about this plan and then you're worried, you can always just get, for example, term life insurance, right? And pay, like, $40 a month, $50 per month just to get, like, a small policy uh, that's 10 times your income or something like that. That way, like, if... While you're doing this plan, you don't make it all the way. Um, your family's taken care of, if that's a part of your plan. Okay. 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 But my point is, right, this information is overwhelming, but there's nothing I said that you can't do. Okay. All right. You have any questions? Okay. Just a question. I just want to make sure with the retirement was all scheduled, you said to put for the retire, I put in 10 years and not zero years. Yeah, so, yeah, for the retire, yeah. You can use that calculator, or for example, you can just use an ordinary compound calculator. Like, I just, my favorite one is called, um, you can put it on Google, it's called, um, you can put in compound interest calculator, and then you put monkey, and, it, and it's like the, the, the money chimp calculator, and it's like a great one, it's very simple to actually use. So you put in your current principal, how much you'll invest per year, and like the years you're actually going to do it for and the return. And I'll tell you everything in there. But if you have, okay. but the big benefit is that you're able to do all this and just have it all be fully tax free. And don't overthink taxes. Like taxes are like, they're not that great, but they're not that bad either. So if I have almost like 9K per year coming in, plus my social security, plus whatever income I'm able to make. And I have no, for example, um, and I have no, no mortgage, you'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. It happened already, so that's why I know about the penalty that happened to me previously. I had to pay a very big penalty fee because yeah. I didn't the, right. The that. benefit is, right, before you take any of my action, it's not what I tell you is why I tell you, right? So if you want to take a day or two to confirm everything I'm saying, by all, by all means, do it, right? Because when, I, when, I, when you take this action, right, we call the long-term team for a reason. is because I don't make short-term decisions. Everything is long-term. So when you take okay. this decision, 
there's no going back. It's just patience. If you keep switching back and forth to maybe this one might get me this or that, no. It's just right. this is going to cost me way too much money. It's not the best idea for me. They get rich while I get poorer. Not my deal. I'll do it this way. I'll have my money for retirement in there. I take that money out. I'm okay. Make sense? Okay. Makes sense. Okay. All right. Thank you for calling in. Thank you for trusting me. And feel free, right? Because you can always call me back, schedule a call, and I'll pick it up as always, and I'll give you a call, okay? Okay. Thank you. Tommy. Thank you so much. All right. Peace out. Peace out. Be blessed. Okay. Bye. God bless. All right, guys, so that person right there wanted to stay anonymous, and that's fine. You know, sometimes you guys call in, you want to stay anonymous, that's fine with me. Don't worry about it. So what I usually do is when you want to stay anonymous is I um, ask my editor, Danny, which is amazing, to just bleep you out, like bleep out your name, and that way you can share your story without having to hold anything back, and this way I can just help you. Now, the overall idea is that sometimes in life, we're so scared to the point where we're willing to take a bad deal just to have a guarantee. It's kind of like I can guarantee you X amount of income, although I'm going to charge you X amount, like a crazy amount, and it makes no sense. Annuities usually are not that great. And, you know, I was looking at Dave Ramsey and his advice on this stuff, and he was like, yo, Tommy, this stuff, not to me personally, but like on, on his website, also like on his videos, and he was like, annuities are not that great. They have a bunch of fees. And that was basically what I was telling her. <laughs> you know, it, it just makes sense. You know, there are a bunch of fees, commissions, left and right, a whole bunch of different little things here and there. And, you know, usually the only time you want to get, for example, like an annuity is if you're able to max out all of your retirement accounts. And then if you want to try something like that out and you also have your, your mortgage paid off, you can if you want to. But usually it is going to be a bad deal. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know how your mom says, why would I do that when I can do it myself? Like, why would I pay this person X amount when I can do it myself? But the good thing about investing is when I say do it yourself, it's not like you have to be actively doing it. It's like, kind of like you, you do it, it's automated, and everything is done for you automatically. That's the good thing. I'm not paying anyone 8%, 10%, none of that stuff. This lady right here is able to do all this stuff in retirement accounts. And that's going to be awesome. And the good thing is because she's 52 years old, eventually, I think now, starting now, she can actually do the um the Roth IRA and the 401k catch up and just catch up to everything, you know? So that's going to be amazing. You know, the whole idea behind this thing is if I were her personally, I would try to drain this 80K into my retirement accounts as fast as possible in the next two to three years. Once that money is in there, I'll keep investing, 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 investing. Imagine retiring, for example, with $240,000, $10,000 in income. That's awesome. And I'm still investing, still working, still having fun, doing whatever I want to do because she has no mortgage. And that's awesome. So, and as I keep getting older, my income keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. And, you know, I sense a little, for example, like insecurity in her voice. So that's why I was kind of like, hey, um, if you're very scared about not making it till the end of this journey and you're scared for your children or your husband, whatever it is, um, don't hesitate. Get in, for example, like a small term life policy, you know, so whether it's like 40 bucks, 50 bucks per month and just like 10 times your income, um, it might be, for example, like $100,000 a year or like $200,000 per year, that's fine, like for the next 10, 20 years, you know? So that way, she has confidence and knows like, hey, if anything goes wrong, I have this life insurance policy so they can pay for all my stuff and also have some money left over. So that way, they're good. Um, yeah, guys, I love you guys a ton. Thank you for calling again. And again, if you want to call me one-on-one, -on -one, the links are down below. I go live on Fridays and take questions live. So join me on Fridays also at 4 p.m. Eastern. But for right now, you want to call me, the link is down below. Thanks for watching. Long-term team for the winning. Subscribe this to this channel. Like this video. It helps a lot. And as always, um, follow me on Instagram, Tiny Bryson. Here's another video here. Click my face right here. And by the way, guys, did you guys know we actually have a highlight channel? So I'll start linking, for example, both of the channels. So this right here is the main channel, and this right here is the highlight channel. See you guys next time. Peace out.